What does it mean to be a Messiah? Messiah is a Hebrew word that means anointed one. In the Hebrew scriptures, the word was used in the context of a king. Uh, most notably, Samuel would anoint Saul with oil. He would anoint David with oil. These are the first two Jewish kings. They are the anointed ones of God. So in Hebrew, King Saul and King David and what the heck, we'll throw Solomon in there, are all messiahs. Any Jewish king was considered a messiah. They were anointed ones of God. So why do we call Jesus the messiah? The Greek word for Messiah is Christos. The New Testament was written in Greek, so the scribes would have referred to Jesus as Christos. It's the same meaning as Messiah. It is the Anointed One. Jesus, the Anointed One. Why do we give Jesus the title Jewish King? Well, it all goes back to the Babylonian captivity. The Babylonian captivity occurred sometime around, let's say, 550 BC. During this period, the Babylonians conquered the land. They conquered Judah. In conquering Judah, they burned the temple down to the ground, they exiled the Jews from the land, and obviously they killed the Jewish king at the time. The Babylonian captivity lasted for about 50 years. During these 50 years, the prophets such as Jeremiah, Isaiah, Zechariah, uh, were preaching that, don't worry, we will return home. We will be allowed to return home. The foreign ruler, the foreign government is going to be overthrown. And the 12 tribes are going to be reunited. The Jews are all going to live in harmony. There will be peace at last. And the figure that's going to do this for us is going to be a descendant of David. This was going to be an ultimate Messiah that would restore the land and the tribes once and for all. This prophecy is a Jewish belief system that we will refer to as Messianism. Messianism is the earliest version of Christianity. Going back to the people that knew Jesus, John the Baptist, Peter, his apostles, and obviously the people that witnessed to the resurrection, they were going around proclaiming that Jesus was the Messiah. So that would mean Jesus has to fit that description I just mentioned of the Messiah. Did Jesus do that? Did Jesus restore the 12 tribes? Did Jesus overthrow foreign power? Did Jesus give the Jews back the land? Yes, but not in the way the Jews were expecting. The Jewish image of Messiah was going to be like a warrior Messiah. Obviously, descendant of David. David was a military king. So the Jews of Jesus' time were probably thinking that perhaps a zealot was going to be the Messiah. The foreign government at the time was clearly the Romans, and they believed that this Messiah was going to overthrow the Romans and, and, and restore the land. So how does Jesus fit that bill? Let's start with the 12 tribes. What are the 12 tribes? The 12 tribes are the 12 sons of Jacob, who was also known as Israel, and from those 12 sons, the entire Israelite nation, church, community, was formed. The Jews are the descendants of the Israelites. He chooses 12 apostles. And from these 12 apostles, the church begins. But this church was bigger than what the 12 tribes had. This was a church that was Jewish and Gentile. It was more than what was expected a Messiah could do. Does Jesus liberate us? Well, yeah, from sin and death. Jesus frees us from the power of sin. He shows us that grace will triumph over sin. That's what our whole faith is based on. Jesus shows us that life will conquer death. Death's not the last word. So we are free from that. Jesus says it best at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus tells us that all the authority of heaven and earth, including all the land, has been given to me. And, and, and the church is the continuation of Jesus. We have the secrets to the kingdom. Some people refer to that as the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We have the know-how to not only have afterlife, but have the kingdom of heaven right here and now. So again, this was more than what was anticipated. The Jews just thought that this Messiah was going to restore the physical land, that they would have control over the promised land. And quite the opposite happened. The Romans killed Jesus, and 40 years later they burned down the land. So this is probably something that the Jews and the prophets never could have anticipated, which gives us some insight as to why Jesus was rejected, particularly after his crucifixion. Gospel of Mark does something very peculiar, though, with this thing called Messiah. Jesus in the Gospel of Mark wants to keep it on the down low. He doesn't want anybody to know 
Whenever he heals, he says, go and tell nobody. He doesn't want people to know that he's the Messiah. Scholars refer to this as the Messianic secret. This is something that Matthew and Luke thought was kind of dumb. You have Matthew and Luke trying to write Gospels to bring people to faith in Jesus, and here's Jesus saying, don't tell anybody he's the Messiah. In John's Gospel, the evangelist makes it really clear that Jesus is not only Messiah, but he's also God. So Mark is the only one that does the Messianic secret. Million dollar question, why does Mark do this? I believe one of the primary reasons why Mark maintains the Messianic secret is because the image of Christ in that Gospel is servant. And... If you're going around calling this person a king, those are contradictory images. Okay, Jesus was known particularly in Mark for his humility. The last thing he wanted was fame and attention by being called the Messiah. And when people went ahead and revealed that he was the Messiah, that's what it brought him. It brought him fame and attention. It, it, got, it brought him mob scenes. Think California, where, where you have celebrities walking out, and everyone wants to go up and ask that celebrity for their autograph. And you can't, be, you, you can't minister effectively when there's all these people around you. Jesus would try to go from town to town, and the secret got out. He wasn't able to minister. We also know, based on what I previously said about messianism, is that Jesus wasn't the expectation. Jesus wasn't fulfilling what people thought a Messiah was going to be. Peter tells Jesus, a Messiah does not suffer, a Messiah does not die. In the Gospel of John, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, and you have Peter again saying, you can't wash my feet. This is not what a Messiah does. A Messiah is not a servant. Jesus demonstrates to us through his vision of what a Messiah is, is, is that the best model for a Messiah is a servant king, a king who serves. And that's just contradictory, and that's confusing to people. And I believe the most primary historical reason why Jesus maintains the Messianic secret is that if people were calling him king, and they were all gathering to hail the king, and he was calling himself king, he started to preach about the kingdom of heaven, and the Romans were aware that this belief system called Messianism existed and that they were going to overthrow the government, calling Jesus Messiah would have meant automatic death.